Hey, this is Joe from SoFi, and in this video, we are going to sync our WooCommerce products stock and price automatically on a schedule. So you can see here, I have a bunch of WooCommerce products, and then up here, I have my data. Now this is in Google Sheets. The data you're syncing from, it can be, you know, your affiliate feed provider. It can be some random XML feed. It can be here, like in Google Sheets. It can be an Excel sheet saved in Dropbox. Anything with a URL where the URL spits out some data, that's what you need. So to get started, let's go down here to all import and select new import. And I'm going to select download a file from URL. Now, if you're going to upload an existing file from your computer, then you're kind of, you're probably just doing a one-off bulk edit, right? So you have this file and you want to take that information and then match it to your existing products or whatever, run the import and be done. In that case, check the description below. We have a link to a uh, bulk editing commerce products, which is a little bit simpler than this. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So in this case, we're going to download a file and have that file downloaded and imported on a schedule. So I'm going to use from URL. If I had a server with FTP or something like that, we could select here, put in our FTP information and download the file that way. In this case, I'm on Google Sheets. Again, doesn't matter what you're using. In this case, we're going to use this one. So to get the URL for this, I can't just take the URL up here, right? Because this is going to return the web page. So what I need to do is I need to go over here to share and publish to web. And then I'm going to go over here, entire document, and I'm going to select CSV and then publish. Yes, I'm sure. Perfect. Now this URL here, when I go to this URL, it's going to give me the CSV of this data. And if this data changes and then go to the URL, it's going to give me the updated version. All right. So I'm going to go over here back to WPL import and put the URL in and you can see output equals CSV at the end. Going to go ahead and download that. And boom, there we go. So it's pulled in the information and now we have to decide what we're going to do. So we're going to import data from this file, not into new items, but into existing items, right? Because we're going to match the products that I already have. And then down here, we're going to select WooCommerce products from the pull down. And then we're going to continue to step two. All right. So you can see here, it's pulled in my information from my file. And this file just needs to have the information necessary to match. So we have our data to match to our products, then the, the information that we want to update onto our site. We don't need to have anything else. And then we have some filtering options here. So for example, if I only wanted to um, update a certain set of SKUs or certain prices within a certain range or products that are only products that are in stock or something like that, then we could filter these and only import a subset of this data. In this case, I want to do everything. So I'm just going to leave the filtering options blank and continue to step three. All right, now here is our import setup page. Now, the only thing we're concerned with here is we want to give the WPL import the data it needs to match to my existing products and then the new data. So I can leave pretty much all of this blank. I'm just going to go over here to WooCommerce add-on. I don't need to worry about the title or anything like that. Even though I have title here, don't need it. Um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select variable product because I have variable products on my site. You know, I have dresses that have small, medium, large, and different colors and stuff like that. So those are variable products. Okay. And then see down here, we have our product variations tab. So now what we need to do is we need to tell WPL import how our file is set up. So all my variable products have SKUs and some other unique identifier. Each variant is linked to its parent, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we can look at the data here, right? And we can see, does my file look like that? I don't have any parent products. So what is the parent product? So in WooCommerce, what they do is we have my paint color sundress here, right? Let's pull this up. Check out all my products. Open up the paint color dress, right? So this page is actually the parent product. And then each one of these variations, like small green, that's going to be a product variation. Okay. And in WooCommerce, these are all tied together. So if you go over here to the variations tab, you can see all the different product variations under the hood. These are technically their own separate products linked to the parent product. Um, in my file here, I don't have that. I just have the variations. Now, it doesn't really matter how your file is set up. You just have to tell WPL import how it's set up. So in this case, all I have are the variations. I don't have any parent products. 
So I can see down here, I have all variations for a particular product have the same title. There are no parent products. So I'll select that. Lo and behold, that is what my file looks like, right? I have the product titles and all the variation information here and nothing else, right? No parent products. So now we need to drag in the product title. And for the SKU, I don't have the parent SKU, right? Because I don't have the parent products. Leave empty to use SKU, the SKU settings from the general tab. Now I'm going to go over here to general and I'll put the SKU up here. All right. So now we're in good shape. So now I've taken care of some of the matching stuff that WPL import needs under the hood. Then I'm going to go over here to variations. Scroll down a little bit. I'm going to say manage stock. Now we have another set of managed stock options over here, inventory. This is used if you just have one set of stock for the parent product and they're all the same, right? In this case, we don't have that. Um, and this is the same, for example, if you went over here to an individual product, this is how they have it set up at WooCommerce. Right over here. So we have inventory, managed stock at the product level, and then inside here, on the variations, manage stock at the variation level, right? So this product, small green, add in stock. This guy's also out in stock. Let's find a little in stock so we can see it. Medium green in stock, 23. Okay. So we're managing stock here at the variation level, not at the uh, parent product level, not at the product level, as they call it. Okay. So manage stock in the variations tab, yes. And I'm going to drag in this dude over here. Okay. And I'm going to leave this off for no. Okay. Stock status set automatically. So if something is zero, it's going to be set to out of stock. If it uh, has more than zero, then it'll be, as, uh, it'll be imported as in stock. Okay. So my stock settings are not correct. So on the variations tab, I have managed stocks at DS and stock quantity right there. Okay. We're going to go back to general and then drag in my price. So MSRP. I'm going to use MSRP for both my sale price and my regular price. Just copy this, put that guy there. Now I want to adjust these. Okay. So I want to have my MSRP, my regular price. I want to set that to 120%. Okay, so now I'm going to be marking up my regular price. What I'm really going to do is give people a discount. So they're going to get actually 10% off of the actual real price here. But I'm just going to make it look like they're getting more of a discount. So you can see for this product, my, my MSRP is $44.79. Look at a preview. Regular price is higher. Sale price is lower. Okay, and that's all controlled here. And I can uh, do a dollar amount instead. However you want to do it. Enter a negative number to reduce prices, positive number to increase prices. So instead, 4470, I kind of want to keep that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it by five bucks and then I'm going to give them a $2 discount. And that way I don't have the weird, uh, I don't have like kind of like off prices here. Ends in 79, just kind of nice. Okay. We're done, right? So we have our pricing set up and our stock set up and everything else. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to get some warnings because I have some databasing, but I don't really care. We can ignore these titles blank. Don't care. Okay. So now we're going to tell WPL import how to match to our existing products. What we're going to do is we're going to use the SKU. Okay. Because this SKU is different for each of my variations. So I'm going to go custom field. We already have SKU in here automatically, because that's probably what you're going to be using. Okay. Now when WPL import finds new or changed data, do I want to create new products? No because I don't have my actual product data in here. I just have my price and my stock. Okay. Now we have to update existing products with the data in your file. And then I want to do skip products. If their data in your file has not changed. Yep. Sounds good to me. Um, basically what this is going to do is every time this uh, file runs, what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if the data changed. If it didn't, it's going to skip it. And that way we don't have to waste time, uh, running imports and stuff. If the data hasn't changed. All right, but we're not going to update all data, right? Because my title is blank and all this other stuff. So if, if I leave update all data uh, enabled, it's going to wipe out every blank field. I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to choose which data to update. 
and unselect all. And then we're going to go down here. Now, all of my WooCommerce data is stored in custom fields. Okay. So my price and my stock information are all in there. All right. So I'm going to update only these fields and leave the rest alone. And I don't really know what they're using here, but I'm just going to type in some stuff in search. Okay. So I want to update the regular price. And there's a couple in here. Okay. I want to update the sale price and I want to update the price. So our pricing information is run with three custom fields in WooCommerce. So we're going to update those. Now we have to do the stock. So type in stock. Okay. We have two manage stock. Sounds good to me and stock. Okay. So these custom fields are responsible for updating my stock and my price and my WooCommerce uh, products. So I'm going to have all of those and that's all I need to do. Everything is set up properly. So up here, going to be matching by SKU. Okay. We're not matching by title or content. You could, if you wanted to, or post ID, not doing that in this case. I don't want to create new products from a uh, records newly present in my file. I'm okay with skipping products if the data has not been changed. Everything is disabled. Choose which data to update. Only these custom fields leave the rest alone. Okay. Now here's the fun part. We're going to go to scheduling options. Okay. And this is how we're going to make WPL import run this import automatically, pulling in the new file every single time it runs and then updating those changes into WooCommerce. So we have two options here. We can use automatic scheduling. This is a service that we provide. It costs $9 a month um, and it will, it's pretty easy to use, right? It has this nice little interface here to set up your, your uh, import. If you want to, you can also use manual scheduling and this is included in WPL Import Pro. And this uses cron jobs. So if you know what cron jobs are, we have some documentation here on how to use it. Um, if you don't know what cron jobs are, the documentation will probably help you sort it out. Um, but this automatic scheduling service, this is what we're going to use for this demo. And it's pretty slick. Okay. So we're going to run this import on the schedule and I want this to run every day. So I'm going to select all these days here. If I wanted to just have it run once a month, I could say, okay, run on the first Monday. But no, I want it every single day of the week and I want to run it twice a day at 8 a.m. And then also 8 p.m. So every 12 hours, this is going to run and keep my site up to date. You can have as many of them as you want. I'm going to have this uh, consecutive with time zones over here. So we'll just have this run uh, with my local time zone. It's good enough for me. And now let's check out our advanced settings. All of these. We can just leave these with the defaults. None of this is really relevant for us here in this import. So I'm going to close that and continue. Okay. Again, we have this, this warning up here. We could ignore that. And here's our import summary. Everything looks good to me. All right. So that didn't take too long. Let's check out products. And let's take a look at our sundress. Make sure our product and pricing information came in okay. All right. So let's go with the small green and that's going to be SKU 2688. Let's see, 2688, 4479 out of stock. Perfect. Remember, so the pricing information we adjusted in WPL import. Negative two and I think plus five, if I remember right. So 4279 and then plus five. Perfect, bang on, all of our information came in okay. Let's see, large red is going to be, the SKU is going to be 2873, eight in stock. 2873, eight in stock. Looks good. So now, thanks to WPL import, let's go back over here. All right. So this import is going to run twice a day at eight o'clock in the morning and eight o'clock in the evening, and it's going to pull or CSV from Google Sheets. Now, again, doesn't matter where you're importing from, as long as you have a URL that gives you an import file, you could put it in a WPL import using pretty much the same thing we just went over. And that is all it takes to update your WooCommerce products, stock and price on a schedule using WPL import. Thanks for watching and we will see you soon.